claim that I'm responding to is that prioritizing art programs will have a great impact on students' overall effectiveness in schools. And the secondary claims to this argument are that art programs have a positive effect on students' mental health, that schools do not equally fund uh, sports and arts, and funding the arts programs the same as sports would help nurture students. So going to the first claim that uh, arts programs have a positive effect on students' mental health, the advocate argues that um, that uh, drama therapy sessions and things like that could uh, help students who have ailments like uh, eating disorders or trauma or illnesses and stuff like that. But this, this does not support the idea that the arts will help with mental health. Rather, it says that the drama therapy can just help these specific students. And while drama therapy may be a beneficial thing to these students, a painting or photography or music class or something like that isn't exactly a drama therapy class that would be like prescribed as a doc by a doctor to a student with these ailments. Um, so this evidence does not show that arts will be beneficial to students' health overall. Rather, it just shows, it talks about specific individuals, which goes against the main claim that will have a great impact on students' overall effectiveness in schools. Also, uh, if you look at that uh, claim just in general, that arts, our programs have a positive effect on students' mental health, if you just look at that in general, not looking at the drama therapy example, um, you can argue that there's a lot of things that could be beneficial to students' mental health, such as playing video games or doing yoga or something like that. But So why should art have any more priority over things like that? Um, going to the second claim, um, the advocate states that the Univers University of Arkansas spent $19.3 million on sports teams in 2015. And I don't really know where this number came from because I looked into it and I found that uh, according to the Arkansas sports main website, the Arkansas sports in general, which includes 19 sports and over 460, 460 athletes, brought in $96 million of revenue in 2015 and they only spent $94 million of revenue. So overall, the sports actually uh, brought in $2 million of profit for the school, so it's not like it's actually taking funding away from anything else, it's actually bringing more funding in. And uh, also this argument is not valid because uh, college and high school funding are very different and based on the example provided, the sports teams uh, getting more funding cannot be used in a negative way because they make more profit in general. Um, also in high school, um, more revenue and popularity is uh, centered around sports teams, so you can't really compare the funding of sports versus arts, because that's just not the way that the funding is allocated, even for uh, high school and college. Um, the third claim, the advocate states that students who participate in arts programs do better in, re in regular classes and on the SAT, and while there may be evidence for that, uh, giving more funding to arts programs uh, won't really change the the fact that um, students are choosing to sign up for our program. So it's their it's their choice. So there's a according to the National Center for Educational Statistics, um, in 1999, 94 percent of public high schools had a music program and 87 had some sort of visual art program. And by 2010, 94 percent of school high schools still had a music program and 83, so down 4% from the 1999, had some sort of visual arts program, which shows that the vast majority of schools do have some sort of access to art or music programs, and yet the students just aren't choosing to take it. So more funding to these programs doesn't necessarily mean that students are going to sign up more often, which again goes against the main claim that more funding will create an overall uh, better effect on uh, students' effectiveness. So in conclusion, while funding for the arts may be beneficial to certain individuals who are interested in art, um, it will not make students overall any more effective in school. Thank you.
All right, organizationally, everything is good. On the first point, I thought that you did a nice job making a reasoning press on the application of drama therapy and uh, suggesting that the advocate was basically equivocating the same, you know, the two things as being the same, and your argument is that they are, in fact, not the same thing, and there's no de documentation that arts are going to have any mental health uh, advantage over other activities that students could participate in. I think that's a good challenge. I do think it would be helpful if you could show that there are these other activities. And by the way, when it comes to mental health, sports might be one of those ones that uh, also provides the mental health benefits that the advocate thinks are important. And where's the, if the evidence that suggests arts would get you a better outcome for mental health than participating in a sports activity? I think that's a reasonable press to make. Um, it, I think you could have refined it a little bit, but I thought it was the right idea. And like I said, I think the reasoning process on the drama therapy was absolutely correct on that particular point. On the second point, uh, the argument here, you go right after the example that the advocate get used, which is the University of Arkansas and their spending, and you kind of put it in context and say, the fact that they spent this money doesn't seem like it matters much because they uh, brought in this much, they spent this much, they actually made $2 million. How that substitutes or takes away from any other program is not demonstrated, and you make an argument that says colleges and high schools are different. I think that's a reasonable argument. The funding of these programs, though, is the thing that needs to be explained, and there's not really much explanation of how that process works. And so the uh, advocate seems to assume that there's some sort of trade-off, and your argument is that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, you know, let's keep it simple and straightforward and show that it's not the case. I think the closest you get to doing that is in the third point where you have some good information that says, look, uh, in the 20 years or the, actually, I guess it's almost 30 years since this survey was done, 94% of schools have had uh, music programs before and 94% still have music programs. 87% had visual arts programs. 83% now have visual arts programs. So there's been a decline, but has there been any documentation that that small decline, which is in fact a small decline, has resulted in any harmful consequence, I think that would be maybe a way to present that argument. I thought the summary was pretty reasonable. It's well organized. I thought you dug up some good counter evidence for the points. You're missing a couple of, you know, like I said, arguments that are right there that go along with the arguments that you're presenting. Just a little more follow through would probably be a good thing. All right.